to the end of my last video, which I uploaded a few days ago. I did tell you that I would be following that video up with a new little project. Now, the original idea was that this was just going to be something I'm going to build for myself and I wouldn't make a video on it. But I did let it slip to one or two of my viewers that I would be doing this and uh, they were quite disgruntled that I wasn't going to, to film it. So I don't want to start World War III. There's enough people in the world trying to do that already. Anyway, so this is what it's basically about. It's purely going to be an amplifier for monitoring sound, largely for, for YouTube videos and general messing about on the computer. The reason I'm going to replace the existing amplifier is because A, it's a nice little project to do and B, the original amplifier I've been using and putting up with for a long time is this. This is a Class D amplifier made by Shaw and I can't even remember what it's supposed to be but I think it's supposed to be about 20 watts per channel into 8 ohms and it's, its problem is apart from the fact it doesn't it sounds okay but it doesn't sound good and it also has a fault that occasionally it will go click and then the sound level will drop and then you've got to turn it up again now because this is not what I call a conventional volume control you have to turn this and it seems like you need about 12 turns to get the volume up and it often runs near maximum level simply because it hasn't got very high gain. So this is what I'm building. These are the amplifier modules that I've selected. They come from eBay, surprise, surprise, and I'll show you the supplier and more details on them shortly. But this, I'm going to use a transformer which has 25 naught 25 volts and it's a 160 watt transformer. Now that is what I'm waiting for at the moment from Farnell. It's been on back order for a while but I'm, I'm hoping it's going to be here. I doubt before the end of this video but at least it will give you a guide to what's going on. But this is very straightforward. This terminal has the positive volts on it. This terminal has the negative volts. And this is the ground. This is the input. And obviously this is one mono channel. Power transistors are screwed to the heat sink. Now, here's a thing about the heat sink. Although this amplifier with the voltage I'm going to use which incidentally, um, I mentioned it would be 25, not 25. But when it goes through the rectifier module, you should get about 35, not 35 DC output, which I reckon will give me somewhere between 50 and 60 watts per channel into 8 ohms. Normally, if I was going to build this for listening to the hi-fi's music, I would have substantial heat sinks on it. But as this is only going to be a monitor where it won't be sustaining high volumes for long periods of time, it will be predominantly voice, but I want it to have good dynamic range. So you, you could argue, why don't I just have a 10 watt amplifier? Well, whilst that would be adequate, there'll be times when you would exceed the peak of that and I don't want to, I don't ever want to go into clip. At the moment, the only heat sinking I have is the box itself, and the whole thing is aluminium. So the whole case will act as a heat sink. Now, obviously, if I was going to be using 60 watts per channel sine wave, it would cook and probably blow up. But for just speech and, and background levels of music, as I explained earlier, I'm not looking for sustained high power. Now, if it, I did find that it does start to get hot, there is no problem in bolting a heat sink on the side. 
The big gap in the middle is where the transformer is going to go. The power module, there is re literally nothing to say about it. I said all that needs to be said in the previous video. All I have on the front panel is a volume pot, which in this case I've chosen a 50k log. And there's also an LED here which will connect somewhere on the circuit. I haven't decided. This is actually a 12 volt fitting. In other words, it has a limiting resistor already, but I don't have 12 volts anywhere inside. So it will need to have another dropper resistor and possibly a diode if I take it from the AC supply. Here is the front panel. Remarkably plain because I don't need anything more than this. There's just the LED which I mentioned and a volume control. Now I haven't put an on off switch on it as such although if I show you the back panel there is here an illuminated on off switch together with an IEC plug and a fuse which at the moment I've rated at 3 amps. Now if you remember me telling you that I use, I started to use this box for a preamp, but due to my lack of skill in metalwork, I really made a mess of it. Now you can see part of the mess still here. I'm not going to zoom in because I'm not proud of this. I've largely made use of the holes that were already in the board and to block the other huge holes up, I've put epoxy in there and then painted it over with a marker pen. Now bearing in mind as I said this is going to be not on display to the public because I, I would be ashamed <laughs> to, to show that it'll be simply in this room with its backside pointing towards the wall which I would suggest that is the best place to put it. But we have on the back simply loudspeakers left and loudspeakers right, input left and right. Apart from that, the reason the on-off switch is on the back is just in case I want to turn it off. But all this would be plugged into the same place on a, a distribution board with a master on-off switch. So when I came, came, come in the office to do some work, it will also power up the scope, um, frequency generator, and the amplifier because that's what you'd normally do anyway. So that makes sense to me. Now, talking of problems, I need to tell you about these amplifier modules. I built them both up uh, largely at the same time insofar as I did all the resistors on this board and then I did exactly the same on the other board. As per usual, all the components were tested prior to fitting. Um, in all forms, I tested, tested the capacitors for leakage, um, ESR, and all, etc. And all were fine. I didn't have any issues with, with any of them at all. So when I assembled it, and first of all, I put power on and initially I just tested this with 15 volts plus and minus going in because as I said to you I'm waiting for the main transformer and didn't have a speaker on it or a load or anything I just put my test meter on the output which is this blue wire and to my horror when I turned it on it slammed into one of the rails so I had something like 25 volts DC, which would have gone straight to the speaker and, uh, well, would have taken out the base unit, basically. So instantly I switched it off. And uh, I don't know whether it's me lacking in confidence. I should do after all these years of messing with electronics. But you instantly think, Mike, you've, you've, you've screwed up here. Something's, something's wrong. So I tested the other module and to my horror, that was exactly the same. So I instantly thought, well, I must have put something in the wrong position, transistor around the right. I couldn't think how I could do because they're all very well marked. And um, I was relatively confident that I had put everything in the right plane and in the right places. 
So I, I took the boards out again, because at this stage they weren't mounted, they were just loose on the desk. Because if you're not going to draw any current, heat sink is, is irrelevant. So I go around again, I got the magnifying glass out, checking for solder bridges, and I thought, well, it's a bit odd, because I would have had to have made the same mistake twice. To cut a long story short, there was and is no faults. If I'd persevered a fraction longer, I would have seen that after about one second, it sounds like a very short time, but it's a long time when there's all those volts, and it would, literally, when you connect it up, it would have damaged the speaker. But that voltage vanishes after a second or so, and then it goes down to two or three millivolts on the output, which is what you'd expect. So I then connected the speaker while it's running and it'll work wonderfully. So the moral to this story is this is why you need speaker protection board to protect you against the product because there's nothing wrong with the product. And in my experience, many amplifiers don't produce volts on the output when you first switch them on. You sometimes get a few odd noises and that's why you tend to mute the speaker so you don't hear these things. But I've never had an amplifier that actually throws lots of DC at it. When everything's connected properly via this module which has the speaker protection on it, it all works fine. But as you see it at the moment, I haven't yet tested it with both modules on and this is what I'm going to do next because theoretically now I know that both boards are okay and I've got the DC protection here I should be able to connect temporary transformer this is a company that I purchased this amplifier from and I paid $27 now you can get this ready assembled and it does cost five odd dollars more or New Zealand dollars more. You can see it's got no nasty little components on it that you need a microscope to install. They're all standard components. And to be fair, I had no issue in assembling it whatsoever. Now, if you look at the website, you can see it requires as little as plus and minus 15 volts or up to 40 volts DC. Now this rather depends on the transformer you're going to use and how much power you expect to get out of it because as you can clearly see it says here power output 80 watts into 8 ohms but that's with an 80 volt supply and that is probably about right into 8 ohms. There is a couple of issues I would have. First of all, it says the quiescent current is you measure the voltage across the cement resistor, which is basically the emitter resistors. And it says you measure the voltage of one and a half to three millivolts. Now that corresponds, I guess, to a total supply load of 10 to 20 milliamps. Now I would suggest that is a little low. Um, time will tell, but I think that's a little bit low. I would expect something like a total current draw per amplifier of about 50 milliamps. It depends on how the crossover looks. We will look at this a bit later on. This business about the quiescent current measured across the resistors. Now, unfortunately, this again is a bit vague because it says you measure it across the 0.15 ohm resistor which is shown on the drawing but in reality there's a 0.2 ohm resistor fitted so clearly those numbers won't be the same but we'll talk a bit later on how I've eventually decided on the quiescent current but it's not going to be that sort of number um, that's approaching class B which is nonsense you need to be aware that the figures and things shown in these graphs 
are what I would call poetic license, because this is a measure of distortion and it shows some very low figures. But look what happens when you get to 10K. It drops. Now, in the real world, there's no way distortion goes down the higher the frequency. You would expect the graph to continue to go up. I mean, it's still going to be ridiculously low, but it, it is not going to be like that, especially as on a straight line. And the reason is, if you look down here, they've jumbled the numbers. They've um, um, band limited it, which makes it look very nice, but they're relying on the ignorance of the public. Um, I'm not saying that to be offensive, but a lot of people would not understand what this means. They would just look at the numbers and it's like saying this amplifier has 200 watts output. Well, it, it might have a sort of 500% distortion, but it, it, to me, it's just a little bit naughty. Why don't they just put it the way it is? Because it's still going to be pretty good. This is a drawing of the board itself. And this is the resistor that you're supposed to measure the millivolts across, which is basically, as far as I can ascertain, in the emitters. Now, that's what it claims. But there are actually point two ohms so clearly those numbers won't be meaningful so that's the basic project i'm going to post this video so far and the next video follow-up that you'll see in a day or two will be after i've connected the transformer and we'll do some basic tests but in the meantime i've got another teaser for you look at these things i'm going to show you soon Look at this. Another new toy. A nice new low cost oscilloscope. Coming soon. An arbitrary waveform generator. Coming soon.